In today's video, let's have a look at the Move tool in Affinity Photo and reveal all the tricks it has in its sleeve. I'm pretty sure that even some experienced users are not aware of some of its features. I was amazed myself while making this video on what the Move tool can do. It is called the Move tool, but in fact it is more of a Select, Move and Transform tool. So let's start with the select functionality first. We can select an object in the document by just clicking on it. The object on top which the mouse touches will be selected. As you notice, selected objects are highlighted with a blue box containing 8 handles. You can also see the selected object highlighted in the layers panel. If I click on a different object, the current selected object will be deselected and a new object will get selected. We can also select multiple objects by dragging and moving the mouse over the objects we want to select. When an object fully fits in the blue marquee area, it gets selected. So make sure that your marquee overlaps the whole object or it will not be selected. This brings us to the concept of modifier keys. Most tools in Affinity Photo have modifier keys. It sounds more complicated than it actually is. It just means that you can press and hold some special key or a combination of keys on your keyboard and the tool you're working with will get a modified behavior, hence the name modifier keys. Instead of making a selection marquee, we can also use the modifier key shift to select multiple objects. So if I keep the shift key pressed on the keyboard and click on an object, the click object will get added to the list of selected objects. If the object was already selected, it will get deselected, while the other objects will stay selected. I prefer to use this over the marquee selection as the marquee select can accidentally select unwanted objects. The next modifier key that not much people know is the option key. I think for Windows it would be the alt key. This allows you to toggle between the object on top of each other at the clicked area. As mentioned, by default the topmost object is selected, but when the option key is pressed, it will select the object below until the bottom one is selected and then come back to the top one. Here is a modifier key I recently found out myself, which can be quite useful. It is the control command key combination. If I use this modifier key on a layer with a child layer, it will pop up a menu to select the child layer. That is pretty awesome. By the way, it also works for groups. You can also select a layer within a group by either using the command key modifier or just by double clicking on the child object to select it. Before moving on to the actual move, here is another interesting modifier key. While you have a selection, press and hold the command key and hover with your mouse on different objects and Affinity will show you the distance between them. How cool is that? So, once you have a selection, what can you do with it? Well, as the name states, you can move it. We do have a couple of interesting and useful modifiers while moving a selection. You can press and hold the shift key this will lock the movement in three directions, horizontal, vertical or an angle of 45 degrees. If you start moving and then press the command key, Affinity will make a copy of the selected objects. Almost as fast as command J. By the way, if you hold the option key before moving, it will also make a copy of the selected object. The following modifier key is useful if you have turned on snapping to objects. Sometimes you want to temporarily disable the snapping because your object snaps between two points and you just want to position it in between them. This can be done by using the option key modifier. Pressing and holding the option key during a move will disable the snapping. 
Now, time to look at the third function of the move tool, which is transformation. By using the handles, we can resize objects. Using the corner handles, we'll resize both horizontally and vertically. The other four handles between the corner handles will resize horizontally or vertically. By default, resizing using a corner handle will maintain the aspect ratio. But by using the shift key modifier, we can disable this. Another important modifier used in transformations with the move tool is the command key. If the command key is pressed during a resize, the resize will originate from the transform origin, which is the cross in the middle of the selection, as you can see. I will show you in a second how to change this transform origin. Also notice how the horizontal transform with the command key pulls the object on both sides. Pretty neat. Another transformation we can apply with the move tool is rotation. We can use the rotation handle located at the top center above the resize handle. Just like with the move, the shift key modifier restricts the action. In this case, the rotation will be done in steps of 15 degrees. If you want to reset the rotation, you can just double click on the rotation handle. Pretty awesome. There is another way to initiate the rotation and that is by moving your mouse close to a corner handle. Once you see your mouse pointer change into a rotation icon, you can now start rotating. Again, we can use the shift key to rotate in steps of 15 degrees. There is one more transformation we can do, but before that, let me share the following, which is pretty cool. If we use the control key modifier and use a handle, we can rotate and scale at the same time. Just keep in mind that it will always use the opposite handle as the rotation origin. And it works on all eight handles. But if we add the command key to the mix, or in other words, pressing and holding the control and command key, the transform origin will be used. That is pretty awesome. As mentioned, the last transformation we can apply is the skew. When we get close to a center handle, the mouse pointer will change in a skew icon and we can now start skewing. If we use the command key modifier, the skewing will be done using the transform origin point. You can skew vertically, but as expected also horizontally. The move tool has a couple of other tricks which I'm going to share right now. As with every tool in Affinity, the top toolbar will contain some additional settings or options for the selected tool. With the move tool, it is context sensitive. Depending on what is selected, it will contain different options. If there is nothing selected, it shows no selection and just a button to open Affinity Preferences. So let's go through the various types of object and see what kind of options we get. If we select a text object, we get the default option from the text toolbar, allowing us to change the font, alignment and so on. But if we move on, we get a selection of buttons which will be always available when an object is selected. We could say these are the move tool options. Let's keep going through the various objects first and then I will focus on these buttons. So the next object that is selected is a group. Here we have the options for fill and stroke, but also there is an ungroup button, followed by the default move options. The fill and stroke changes will affect every child in the group, so be careful with that. A curve object almost has the same options. Fill and stroke will now apply to the selected curve. A vector object will show the vector object properties, just like with the vector tool. In this case, it is a rectangle and I can quickly change the style or the corner type. It will also contain the move options. With a pixel layer, we just get the move options only. However, if we have an image layer, we do get some unique properties that are only available in the move tool. First, we have the imported image properties. 
and the possibility to quickly resize or reset the applied resizing. One other cool feature is that we can replace the image. When I press on it, I can select a new image and the current image will be replaced, but it will keep all the child layers attached to it. Pretty cool. This makes it very easy to create placeholders, which you can later change. We also have the fill and stroke options on an image layer. The fill will recolor the image and the stroke is the border around the image. Here is an interesting button. Convert it to a curve. No, it doesn't trace your image into a vector. It just creates a curve in the shape of a rectangle and then sets the fill of this curve to the image. If I rename the layer, we can see more clearly what the layer is. Let me undo a couple of steps and show you the lock children functionality, which shows up if you select an object with child layers. To make this clear, I'm going to add an orange rectangle in the current image layer. When the lock children checkbox is unchecked, meaning the children are not locked, the children will move with the parent layer. So if I move the image, you see the orange box moves along. If we enable the lock children option, the child layers will stay put. So when I move the image layer, the orange layer is not moving along. To wrap up this video, let's go through the move options we have seen. The first one is the enable transform origin. When we enable this button, Affinity allows us to change the transform origin, which I mentioned in the beginning of the video. The cross in the center becomes blue and I can now move it around. The transformations I showed earlier using the command modifier are now applied from this origin. If you want to reset the transform origin back to the center of the selection, you can just double click on it. Pretty neat. The next one, hide selection while dragging. When we turn this on, the blue box and the control handles are not shown during a move of the selection. Can be useful while designing and moving layers around so you don't get distracted, I guess. The show alignment handles option is also not that exciting. It shows you the positions in the selection where snapping will occur when you move this selection. The transform object separately is however an important option and can be very handy. You probably would not need it that much, but when you need it and you don't have it, your life will be miserable. So what does it do? Well, if you have multiple objects and you do a transformation, for example, a rotation, when this is turned off, the rotation is applied to the selection as if it was one object. When I turn on this option, the rotation will be applied separately for each object in the selection using the transform origin of each individual object. Pretty neat. The last one in this group of options is the cycle selection box. This is a bit tricky to explain. Let me try to show you what it does. I will rotate this object. As you see, the blue box of the selections and the handles are also rotated. If I click on the cycle selection box option, the selection box will change into a rectangular area which contains the previous selection. This can be useful for doing additional transformation but it can also help with snapping and alignment. The last group of buttons are alignment options for the selection. If there's only one object selected, the alignment will be applied between the document canvas and the selected object. So the center button will center the object to the center of the document. When there are multiple objects in a selection, the outer border of the selection will be used as the base. So for example, the left align will align all the objects in the selection to the most left aligned object. And this wraps our video.
I was expecting this to be a short video, but I forgot how much functionality there is in the move tool, which I take for granted. I hope you liked this video and had as much fun as I had with the move tool. Thank you for watching and until the next video.